Hello, and welcome to the next installment of the System C video training series from Forte Design Systems. Today's video deals with establishing a handshake protocol between modules. Now last time, we built a top-level system module that instantiated a test bench alongside a FUR module and connected them with SC signals. That system module was instanced in a file called main.cc where we defined an SC underscore main function that actually runs the system C simulation with the SC underscore start function. Here's a visual reminder of what we built showing the test bench and FUR modules connected with signals. Now we're going to shift gears a little and go over to my workstation. Here's a directory containing all the files we created in the last video. Here's the fur.h and fur.cc files where our fur filter module is defined. And if I open the fur.cc file, you'll recognize the code. Here's where we include fur.h. Here's the fur constant coefficient declaration. And here's the fur underscore main clock thread with the reset functionality followed by the continuous while loop which contains the fur algorithm. Now back in the directory over here is the tb.h and tb.cc files where the test bench is written and then main.cc with the system module and sc main function. There are two things however here you won't recognize. One is this make file and the other is this golden directory. These are things I'm going to show you in a later video. The make file compiles and runs a system C simulation for our test environment and the golden directory contains an expected simulation output to determine whether the simulation passed or failed. Again, I'll show you how to do this later, but for now I just want to show you what happens if we try to simulate the test environment we've written so far. To run the simulation, I just type make and return and you see it compiles the various system C files after which it builds a simulation executable and runs. However, as you see here, the simulation fails. The results coming from the fur output do not match our expected golden results. We have inputs and outputs of the test bench and fur module directly connected to each other, but there's something we're missing here. So in the next few slides, we're going to learn exactly what's causing this simulation mismatch. Let's take a different look at our test bench and fur module and just concentrate on the I.O. The test bench has a source thread which produces an input value that travels across the connection signal into the fur, where it's read by the fur main thread. Likewise, fur main produces an output whose value travels across the connection back to the test bench, where it's read by the sync thread. Well, that's all very nice, but remember, we're dealing with code that will be synthesized and become hardware. Recall that the source thread has just a for loop that produces a new input value every iteration. It will write that value to the output port regardless, even though fur main may not be ready for new input data. Conversely, fur main has a continuous while loop, and each iteration it reads whatever value is present on its input port, without regard for whether what it's reading is valid data. Same is true on the output side, where fur main writes an output value and only leaves it there for one wait statement having no idea whether the test bench sync thread actually read that output value. And the sync thread? Well, just like source, it has a for loop where it reads whatever value is on its input port, and it's oblivious to whether that value is any good. This is the problem with our current simulation. The test bench threads and the fur main thread are iterating away just reading and writing values, and there's no communication between them. What we need are some companion signals, something to tell a module's input port that the data it sees is valid, and something to tell a module's output port that whoever is reading its value has read it successfully. These companion signals are called handshaking signals, so let's learn what they are and how to make use of them. So if we go back to a diagram of the test bench and fur module with their pins, let's look at how the I.O. connections change if we add some handshaking signals. For the input INP signal that goes from the test bench to the fur, we're going to add INP valid pins on both modules and connect them with a signal. This is an output for the test bench and an input for the fur, and it's a way for the test bench to tell the fur that the data currently present on its input port is valid. We'll also add INP ready pins on each module and connect them. This signal goes the other direction, from the fur to the test bench 
and it's a way for the FIR module to tell the test bench whether it's ready to read a new input value. The same handshake can be set up on the output side. We can add out P valid pins with a signal going from the FIR to the test bench, which tells the test bench that the FIR output data is valid, and also add out P ready pins with a signal going the other way. This signal, of course, telling the FIR whether the test bench is ready to read its output data. So now that we know this, let's add all of these extra signals, pins, and connections to our test environment. After that, we'll look at how the handshake will work and what system C code we need to add to implement it. Over here in the main.cc file, we can add the top-level signals for the handshaking connections. For the input side, we'll declare an SC signal for the input valid signal, and this only needs to be a single bit wire, so we'll designate it as type bool. Then we make the same signal declaration for the input ready signal. For the output, we declare the output valid signal and the output ready signal. Down in the constructor, we can start connecting these signals up. First, we'll do the test bench. With the knowledge that we're going to add an output pin called INP valid to the test bench, we'll add a line connecting that pin to the input valid signal that we just declared. Then another line connecting its input ready pin to the input ready signal. Then on the output side, we connect a new out P valid pin to the output valid signal and the out P ready pin to the out P ready signal. Now we do the same thing for the fur instance. A new input pin on the fur called INP valid will connect to the INP valid signal. We'll connect the INP ready pin to its signal and on the output side, we'll connect the out P valid pin and the out P ready pin to their respective signals. Now let's jump down inside the modules and add the pins we need. In the tb.h file where our test bench module is declared, for the input handshake we have two new pins, an output called NP valid and an input called NP ready. So here's the SC out and SC in port declarations for those. And for the output handshake, we have a new input pin called OutP Valid and a new output pin called OutP Ready. In the FIR module over in FIR.h, the pins are just the other way around from the test bench. The NP Valid pin is an input, so here's the SC Import declaration for that, and the NP Ready pin is an output, so here's its declaration. The OutP Valid is an output, so we add that here, and the OutP Ready is an input. So now that we have all our signals and ports in place, let's take a moment to examine exactly how a handshake scheme works. We'll focus on the input side of the handshake between the test bench and FIR and construct a waveform showing their interaction step by step. In the beginning, all of the handshake signals are in their initial state. When the test bench source thread has new data to send to the FIR, the first thing it will do is assert the input valid signal and write the new data to the input port indicating to the FIR that new valid data is ready. Now before, when we had no handshaking, the test bench would just write an input value, call a wait statement, and move on without any confirmation that the FIR had read the data. And that's why our simulation is currently failing. With a handshake in place, what the test bench should do now is wait, indefinitely, until it gets an input ready signal back from the FIR. When the FIR becomes hardware, this could be the very next clock cycle, or it could be a thousand clock cycles. Either way, the test bench waits until the FIR confirms that it's ready. When that happens, the FIR asserts the input ready signal and reads the new data, and the test bench deasserts input valid and everything repeats for the next input data value. The output will work the same way. When the FIR has a new output value to write, it will assert its output valid signal and wait for the test bench to indicate it's ready to read that value by returning an output ready signal. So to show you the actual code to write to implement handshaking in the modules, I'm going to go back to my desktop. Let's start in the test bench, so we'll open up the tb.cc file and take a look at how to generate the handshake signals in the source thread. First, the source has a new output, which is the input valid port. So here in the reset section of the thread, we're going to add an initial value for that signal. So we just add the line INP underscore valid dot write and give it a value of zero. And so what that does is it provides an initial value for that particular handshake signal. Then down in the for loop where the input data is generated, we need to add the input valid signal generation and waiting for ready that we showed you earlier. 
So right around the line here where the value is written to the input port, we can add the code for that. First, we want to indicate to the fur that we have new valid input data. So we assert the input valid signal. So on the line just above here, I'm going to say input valid dot write and give it a value of one. So that's asserting the input valid signal. Then on the line immediately afterward, we write the actual value. So after the input value is written, we want to wait for the fur to indicate it's ready to read that value. This will be a new C construct to learn. We're going to implement this with a do while loop. So here's how that will look. You say do with an open brace and then a wait statement and then a close brace and then a while expression. And what this is is just a statement that unless this is true, we'll continuously repeat this do while loop. What we want to say is not input ready dot read and then close parenthesis and semicolon. So what we're saying is we're going to continually wait until this expression becomes true. So once we see input ready go to one, all that's left to do is deassert the input valid signal. So on the next line we just say INP valid dot write and give it a value of zero and we're done with the test bench side of the input handshake. So we'll save these changes in tb.cc and move over to implement the other side of the input handshake in the fur module. We'll open up fur.cc and start with the reset section of the fur main thread. So we'll go down to where the output port gets its initial value. We'll just add a comment that we're initializing the handshake. And on the next line, we initialize these two new outputs. INP ready dot write zero and output valid dot write zero. Now down in the fur algorithm, we go to the line where we're reading the input port and add the other side of our input handshake. Now on the fur side, we need to tell the test bench we're ready for new data. So we add a line INP underscore ready dot write one. So that asserts the input ready signal to one and tells the test bench we're ready for new data. Now if the test bench hasn't sent us any valid data yet, we want to wait for it. So again, we're going to use a do while loop. So we'll say do wait close brace while and in the while expression we're going to say not input valid dot read and so what that does is it waits until we get valid input data when input valid becomes a one then we read the input data with the original line here and as we start performing the fur algorithm with this data we just read we want to tell the test bench not to send any more data until we're ready and we do that by simply adding the line INP ready dot write zero. That's it. We now have a full two-way handshake on the input data going from the test bench to the fur. Now let's finish up by doing the same thing with the output handshake. Let's scroll down in the fur.cc file and go where the out P port is written with data. We want to start the handshake by telling the test bench that we have valid data, so we assert the out P valid port like this. Just add a line out p underscore valid dot write one. Then the next line we just write data to the output port. That's just the original line from before. Now we need to wait until the test bench is ready to read this data. Again, that means a do while loop. So we just do this. Again, do with an open brace, a wait statement, close brace with while and then our while expression which is not output ready dot read and at that point we know that the test bench will read the data so we just deassert output valid and repeat the while loop so we add out p valid dot write zero and that's it there's the end of the while loop and there's the end of the thread.
So now I'm going to save these changes and close fur.cc and we'll conclude this work by completing the other side of the output handshake over in the testbench sync thread. I'll open the tv.cc file and scroll down to the sync thread. So the sync thread has one new output, that being the output ready port. Now the code you see here at the beginning of the thread is used for determining whether the simulation passed or failed. So don't worry about that, I'll show you what this is in another video. What we want to do before we get into the for loop is initialize the outp ready port. So I will add a comment followed by outp ready dot write zero. So that gives it an initial value. With that done, we move down into the for loop where the fur output data coming into the outp port is read. To implement the handshake, first we want to tell the fur that we're ready to receive some new output data. So we assert the outp ready signal, outp ready dot write one. And next, like the other sides of the handshake, we want to wait until the fur module has some valid output data for us. So I'm going to add do open brace wait statement, close brace and while, and then our expression, which is going to be not out p valid dot read. So that will wait until we get valid output from the fur module. Then we want to read the output data using the original line here. And with that data successfully retrieved, we just have to deassert output ready. And so I'll do that by adding out p underscore ready dot write and a value of zero. And with that, we have our entire handshaking protocol implemented and complete. So now I'm going to save tb.cc and see how our changes have worked. Back on the command line, I'm going to type make to run the simulation. It compiles the system C source files into an executable and runs it. And as you can see, the simulation now passes. So our handshake is working. So let's review what we've done today. We had a failing system C simulation and we fixed it with handshaking, and in particular, a ready valid protocol handshake. Ready and valid lines are just companion signals to the I.O. and the way they work, depending on which module and thread you're in, is to assert a valid signal and wait for a ready, or to assert a ready signal and wait for a valid. And that waiting was done with a new C construct we learned, the do while loop. Because of handshaking, there's no loss of data between the modules, and the result is a passing simulation, and one that will work whether you are simulating system C behaviorally or simulating a cycle accurate piece of hardware. We hope you enjoyed learning how to handshake system C modules. Join us next time for more topics on running a successful system C simulation. <laughs>